Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for coming and joining us today. I am sorry that we had a little confusion with the link uh, today. So I thought I would go ahead and record this for you so that you can have it. And for those of you who are watching this online, thank you for coming. Uh, today is November 22nd, and it is the Sunday of Thanksgiving week, which means that we are beginning a period of thankfulness. Now, I know that each and every one of you have been taught, because our parents are smart about making sure we have good manners, have been taught to say thank you when somebody gives something to you. But did you know that thankfulness actually goes beyond that? And here's what it is. Thankfulness is not just a response to something that happens, but it is a way of being and of acting and of thinking. And what I mean by that is when you are thankful, you are appreciative in every way, deep down inside for whatever it is that has happened, for whomever it is that has been there with you or has helped you or has shown you love, or for a gift that you've received or a place that you have been or something you have seen. For instance, I am thankful that when I was in high school, we took a field trip to an art museum in Chicago and I got to see a huge stained glass window by the artist Mark Chagall. And if you want, you can Google it, it's beautiful. And it was my favorite color blue. It's a blue that's really hard to describe, but it is just beautiful. And the way it's set, the room wraps around in an arc and at the front of the arc is the window. And it is all white so that when the sun shines through that hallway just glows this glorious blue. And in that moment, I got lost and I felt so good and all of my anxiety about making sure that people liked me and that I would fit in and then I was not cool enough to be in with the cool kids. All of that anxiety and fear that was eating me up inside went away in that one moment. So I am thankful for that moment in my life because I realized that the things that were keeping me from making friends was all in my head. They weren't necessarily real. Not saying that there weren't moments where people didn't get along with me, but I'm saying that a lot of what the problems that I was seeing were not actually there. They were in my head. So I was thankful in that moment of quiet and peace that I got to have that realization. And the funny thing is, is we don't have to just be thankful for good things. We should also, weirdly enough, be thankful for the bad and tough things that happen in our lives. Here's why. When you go through a tough time, you learn something. Sometimes you learn what you shouldn't do. Other times you learn something you could do better. And other times you learn about something you didn't even know. For instance, you didn't know that when you say a certain thing, that's something that really hurts somebody's feelings. And you had no idea until that moment when somebody pointed it out to you. You also have moments of really tough times, your parents going through a divorce, so you've had to move and change schools. But what you've learned in those things as you come out of it is that you made it through. Whether it was because you went to therapy or you had friends to talk to, or you realized that you are actually a funny or cool or nice person and that people actually like you, that's what you get out of it. That is what you can be thankful for. You're thankful that you went through a tough time so that you can have all of this that you have now. An image that goes with that is the idea of making a sword or even a metal cup or a crown. All of those things are made with metal. Well, the way that you process metal into those things is that first you have to go through the hard work of digging up and finding the metal. Then you've got to clean it. Get out all of the things that are not the type of metal you want, whether it be gold or iron or steel. Got to clean it up. Then you have to put it into heat that is so hot that it melts it into a liquid. And then you pour that liquid into a form or a mold and you let it cool slightly. And then you take a hammer to it or other tools and you scrape and you press and you beat it down over and over again. 
And then while it's still hot, you thrust it into cold water. And then after that, you hammer it some more and then you stick it back in the fire and it just keeps repeating, getting hot and then cold and then being beaten in between. And, and it's just hard on that metal. It's hard on the, what was a rock is now metal. But then after all of that, it gets cleaned and polished. And suddenly what was just a simple rock is now a sword or a beautiful goblet or a magnificent crown. You are like that too. You go through tough times in your life and you feel like you're getting beaten or you're getting boiled alive and then shoved in cold water and it's just so much. But if you take a moment and think about the good things that are happening, even if it's just a tiny thing of you knew you got to eat dinner that day when other people didn't, those little, little things can help you to make it through those tough times. And after you've gone through those tough times, you can take a moment and look back and you realize, I learned something. Or I now recognize I am strong. There are people who have gone through what I went through and didn't deal with it well. I did it. I made it through. And I'm stronger. But the choice is yours. You can either learn from what you did and get polished and formed. And you can be that magnificent sword or that glorious, eloquent crown or the beautiful goblet. It's all up to you and your choices. Are you going to choose to be thankful for what you have? Choose to recognize that you are who you are and that that's important? Are you going to be thankful from day to day? Now, one thing I challenge you is, you may be sitting here looking at me going, this lady is so full of whatever, but I have something to prove to you how strong being thankful is. With the help of your parents, go to psychology blog, psychology today blog, and look for an article by Mary Morin about the seven benefits of being thankful. In there, she lists seven things about being thankful that are amazing. Things like it can help you to make it through trauma, difficult times, even the hardest of times. It can actually make you healthier. It can make you feel better about yourself and who you are and what you can do. It helps you to not feel so depressed or lost. And all of those things transform you. See, when you're no longer that sad or hurt or lost person, because you started to turn focus on thankfulness, you flip it. And now you're somebody who is less depressed not feeling as lost, and you're slowly but surely getting to be strong about who you are. And it's in that strength and in that growing, with that thankfulness that you become a greater, better person. And for us as Christians, that's a good foundation for strengthening your faith, for understanding that God helps us through those tough times and that we're thankful that he's always there, even when it doesn't seem like he is because we can't see it. We have faith and trust that God's there with us. Another way of thinking about it is this. If everything in your life was always good, and if everything you ate always tasted like your favorite thing, and everything you touched was exactly what you wanted it to be, would you appreciate it? Because... Sometimes having too much of something gets boring and it doesn't, the flavors don't taste the same anymore. They're not as pleasurable. But if you have some tough times where something doesn't taste like you wanted it to, or your bed is too hard, or you didn't have an experience that made you happy, you wouldn't know how good it feels to be happy how wonderful it is to have a nice, soft, comfy bed, or how amazing it is that you have been waiting for me, it's creme brulee dessert, been waiting for creme brulee, favorite dessert. The taste of it in my mouth just makes me feel so happy. 
But if I didn't have times where I bit into something and was like, I wouldn't be able to truly appreciate how good that is. Or if I slept on a rock, I can truly appreciate then how wonderful my bed is and how much I may have taken it for granted. It's similar to if you take your hands and here's a challenge for you. Put your hands in some warm water. Does it feel good, nice and warm and cozy? Great. Now, keep your hands there. Does it still feel that wonderful warmth? No, it's just water. Now, take your hands and put them in some ice water. Let your hands get super cold and uncomfy. Oh, not fun. And now stick it back in the warm water. Warm water feels so much better now than it ever did, doesn't it? Well, that's what it's like if you continually are thankful for what you have, even if it's the little things, because then when the big things come, you're even more thankful and that joy and happiness grows. And eventually it starts to move who you are and you can become a happier person. And when you're happier, you start to make more friends. You start to make changes in your life and good decisions because you're not as stressed. And when people see that in you and they're like, why are you feeling so good? It's, it's a rainy, nasty day. Well, you can say, it's because I'm thankful for the little things I have. And when you get a little bit conf more confident with your faith and you feel comfortable telling people, you can tell them that part of the reason why you're thankful is because that's what Jesus taught us to do. And then when you share that with people and then they take it home and use it themselves, you have become a disciple like John, like Paul, like James, you are now a disciple. So what I want to do for you today is this, my challenge, because each week we have a little challenge. And this week, the challenge is every single day to find five things that you are thankful for. And every night before you go to bed, write down those five things. It might take as much as 15 minutes, but just take those five things and write them down right before you go to bed. And as you're laying there and getting ready to fall asleep, think about each of those five things. And as you do this, and I do it every single day, come back and we'll talk about if that changed how you slept. Did you feel a little better? Was it a nice exercise? So this week with Thanksgiving coming, we want to focus on thankfulness, being thankful for the things that we have, being thankful that we don't have things that may be a temptation for us, and thankful for the people around us and for those who take care of us. And especially right now with our pandemic, we're thankful for our teachers taking the extra effort to teach us in a different way. We're thankful for the police officers and the doctors and the firemen who take the risk of getting sick themselves just to help us out because they believe so strongly in what they do. We wanna thank our moms and dads for trying to balance work and kind of sort of being a teacher and still being a mom and dad all in one. That's hard work. And we wanna thank ourselves and our brothers and sisters for working on being patient and for being thankful for those people so that it's a little bit easier to deal with the stress of always having to be together and not getting a break. So again, find your five thankful things every single night and write them down and tell how, see how it makes you feel. Do you start to see more good things as you go through the day, as you go through the week and come back on Sunday and we'll talk about it and see how things went as we begin our Advent season next Sunday. Thanks again for coming and God bless each and every one of you. I'd like to say a quick prayer with you. If you'll join me and bow your heads. Thank you, Jesus, for providing us an example of what it means to be humble and kind and working towards being good and seeing the good in each person. Thank you for setting that example and giving us the opportunities every single day to have something to be thankful for. We know that in our thankfulness, we can become stronger and healthier. 
and we can move forward in each day with a little bit more strength as we appreciate the goodness around us. We ask that you help us to continue to be safe and healthy and protected. Help us to appreciate and love and be thankful for our loved ones and help them to love and appreciate us. And we want to continue to pray for all of those who are in need or who are sick. And thank you for being here with us today. In your name we pray, amen. Goodbye everybody and God bless.